I'm an international human rights lawyer. The modern idea of human rights, the notion that we each are endowed with certain fundamental rights simply because we are human, that we all have value and agency, was born during the Renaissance humanism era. Today, most of us understand the term human rights to mean those basic rights and freedoms inherent to all human beings everywhere. We can get a bit numbed by the daunting figures associated with human rights abuse. Today, there are 1.3 billion people living in extreme poverty. One out of four humans live without electricity. There are between 21 and 36 million people enslaved around the world. There are 300,000 child soldiers. There are 59 and a half million forcibly displaced people around the globe. And on it goes. These stats are overwhelming, difficult to comprehend, and often to relate to. But what we do understand are the individual stories. That one young woman brave enough, despite being shot, to stand up for every girl's right to go to school. The woman who refused to sit in the back of the bus. The man who had a dream for civil rights, equality, and justice. We are hardwired to understand narrative arcs and stories. They're how we understand who we are and who we want to be. My first job in the field was 15 years ago with the Genocide Prevention Center. We were pioneering a way to use Russian satellite imagery for humanitarian use, and it was working. But even when we succeeded, when we could, on a clear day, see from space what was happening on the ground in a war-torn region and could see mass graves or evidence of genocide, using this, at the time, cutting-edge technology, we could only verify what had happened after everyone was dead and gone. What we really needed what we still need is technology that could identify potential atrocities before they happened. Sadly, the Genocide Prevention Center no longer exists, and the time machine has yet to be invented. I went on to work on human rights issues in Asia, Latin America, Eastern Europe, and Sub-Saharan Africa, and to research and write about how we can improve access to justice through innovation. And along the way, I've always remained keenly interested in how technology can foster human rights and positive social impact. This isn't just a modern conceit. Gutenberg's printing press democratized knowledge beyond the elite classes, and the Telegraph made Lincoln the first wired president. There were extraordinary advances in telecommunications, science, and math in the 20th century. And inventions from Turing's machine to IBM's Watson to virtual reality had and will have dramatic effects on the human condition. The internet, social media, and big data provide more transparency, and technology, while it can be used for propaganda too, allows people's voices to be a part of history like never before. But we still haven't developed the tools to save us from the worst in all of us. And the 21st century human rights paradigm is about to be dramatically disrupted. And whether this is going to be a change for the better or for the worse, we don't know yet. So what if I told you that in the future, the single most important thing we can do to safeguard humanity will be to teach concepts of rights and values to machines? That the key to decoding this most ancient idea of human rights will be found in the way we choose to develop artificial intelligence, or AI, which is robotics, software, and computers that have the capacity for intelligent behavior, and that the time to do this is now. Intelligent machines currently being designed will have the ability to reason for themselves, to improve themselves, and in short order, will exceed the intellectual capacity of human beings exponentially. This will be the last frontier of invention and innovation since our machines will likely become better at inventing and innovating than we have ever been or could ever be. Philosopher Nick Bostrom has said that the first ultra-intelligent machine is the last invention that man need ever make, provided that the machine is docile enough to tell us how to keep it under control. <laughs> and just how fast is this tech coming? Well, while well, the concept of what constitutes a thinking machine remains open for some debate, techniques like deep learning and crowdsourcing knowledge for AI are bringing us closer and closer to machines that think for themselves. Futurist Ray Kurzweil predicts that we will reach technological singularity, where AI surpasses human intelligence and comprehension in less than 30 years. And others think it will happen much sooner. 
Now, this should come as little surprise, since we're already reliant on machines, and we use simple forms of AI on a daily basis, from Pandora to Netflix to Siri to video games to Google. And AI technologies like driverless cars, autonomous drones, and robots that can play games are proliferating. Now, this is both a little bit scary, but also truly exciting because I believe AI could give us a chance to finally find global solutions to human rights challenges we face, but have been unable to solve. You see, Einstein himself knew that there was something more important than knowledge, imagination. And the vital link between developing AI and to creating a more just society will be what we incorporate into our algorithms and machines so that we impart to them the best values and aspirations that human culture has to offer. The AI revolution is coming. And I think it's going to give us a chance to get it right. Technology might actually give us an opportunity to truly embody what it means to be human to be vulnerable and resilient, imperfect and courageous, brave, and full of potential for love and authentic connection, and to program these traits into the future to overcome our darkest human instincts. There is, however, no guarantee we'll successfully accomplish this, and there have been theories in science fiction galore about the potential danger of machines, that they could take over our world and even make us go extinct as a species. Stephen Hawking has warned that AI could mean an end to the human race. And we've all seen the movies about the wrath of the Terminator and armies of robots. There is a lot of divergent thinking on what's ahead. But here's what we do know. AI is getting really good at identifying patterns, though it's still far less good at understanding common sense. So the question is, what patterns are we going to teach our future robot friends? When we look into the reflection in the crystal ball, the mirror of the future, what do we want to see? We need to start thinking hard about the values, the patterns, the code of ethics that we will need to instill in our machines and our laws. Values are different than rules. Rules can be broken or follow for the wrong reason. Values are something deeper. Acting according to our values means we unearth what's beneath the rules and follow them only when we determine they are aligned with our values like some of our great moral heroes and leaders, including Gandhi, Rosa Parks, and MLK Jr. have shown us. Teaching machines how to learn is to teach them how to make decisions and learn from past mistakes, like we humans do. Language is inextricable from intelligence, which is why natural language processing, the interaction between computers and human language, is so important to AI. And if you think we can let the machines sort this out without factoring in the human condition, just consider the recent example of racist rants a Twitter chatbot learned within 15 hours of going live. So really, it's not technology we have to fear, it's people. No less a visionary than Stuart Russell believes that the survival of our species may in fact depend on instilling values in AI. So one of the big ideas that researchers and futurists are positing is that the most natural way to give robots values is to imprint them with our human stories. So storytelling might be the key to creating these values in robotics, taking ideas from culture, movies, poetry, literature, myths, and fables, and then reverse engineering what the values are and what it means to be a moral human. AI is already being taught to create stories, to write fiction, and to even tell jokes. Who knows, maybe we can even finally get that ending to Game of Thrones. <laughs> but uploading all of our great literature won't be nearly enough, nor has it been for us humans. You see, we all come to everything from our own different backgrounds, patterns, stories, and histories. We all look at the world through our own lens, often unaware that we're seeing things through a filter. And those filters can make it difficult to see others' perspectives and can make it tempting to react with fear and hate instead of with compassion. I've studied genocide, war crimes, conflict resolution, and post-conflict justice. And my conversations with people around the world have shown me that the illusion that we're separate is the cause of most conflict and strife. The farce that someone's life matters less or more than yours, that we're not all connected. As Paul Farmer says, the idea that some lives matter less is the root of all that's wrong in the world. So it is imperative that first and foremost machines understand values like the concept of equality. But given the human species' record of human rights abuse, are we even capable of this? 
Do we even have the answers to give them? And who are we going to entrust with this task? We need to start examining these questions, and we don't have time to waste. People are dying every day due to fear and hate. Maybe they always will. And this haunts me. I am tormented by the trauma, the injustice, the abuse, the racism, the sexism, the bigotry, the devastation, the ones I saw in the satellite images who I could not save. So imagine if the machines in our future had the bravery, honor, and ideals of Malala or Mandela, Jean Valjean or Dumbledore, or better yet, if they could also teach us humans more about these values and how to act on them too. Because if we fail to impart our highest values and ideals to AI, then we will become like our most fearful idea of robots. Or as Sidney J. Harris warns, the real danger is not that computers will begin to think like people, but that people will begin to think like computers. While contemplating how we can build AI with values, it's helpful to consider the ways we've imagined robots in our fiction. We certainly have envisioned many dangerous and vengeful machines. At the same time, the generous and loyal robots we have dreamed up, like R2-D2, C-3PO, WALL-E, and Jarvis, show us how imagining a machine that represents the best of humanity helps us to see how we humans aspire to act, how to step back, to look in the mirror, to think about what it means to be human. As Brene Brown said, stories are data with a soul. So if AI is going to be the future of science, innovation, and technology, it's going to need to know Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, Shakespeare and Mary Oliver, The Lion King and Maya Angelou, Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey, MLK's letter from Birmingham jail, the Gettysburg Address. And of course, the most treasured stories in languages and from cultures around our world and from throughout our history. These are the stories that inspire me. These are the essentials that paint the picture of what it means to be human. And the process of building AI that can protect human rights needs to be a cycle of continually searching for the best ways to teach our intelligent machines to do better than we have done in the past? These are the difficult questions we need to ask, more difficult than building the technology itself. Can we create machines that have values, or will we lose ours? I want to believe we can. Do you? Are we capable of creating machines that will not only share our highest values, but help us to make them better? When you look into the mirror, through the looking glass, and into the future, what do you want to see?